Hey everybody, just before we jump into the video today, this is actually from a separate YouTube channel that we do called Highlight History. It's a bit of a rebroadcast. The chances are really that you haven't seen this before. If you have seen it before, you're a big fan. Thank you for that. Uh, this is a new channel we're doing, Highlight History. Uh, it's basically a today in history sort of thing. If you like what you are about to see, please go over and subscribe to that channel. I am linking to it below. And let's do it. In response to the horrors of World War I, Norway's leaders had engaged in a policy of disarmament that left their military relatively weak by 1940. Thus, when the Germans invaded in April of 1940 the country, it was ill-prepared to defend itself. Nonetheless, Norway's government and its king were able to evacuate the country, and evade being forced to agree to accept the protection of the Reich, which impeded Germany's ability to legitimize its hold in the country. Almost immediately, Norwegians from all walks of life began to resist the German occupation, including military units in the north of the country engaging in active campaigns, and its merchant fleet helping to transport Allied troops and supplies. In addition, sabotage operations were conducted by small groups across the country, while others worked as spotters, identifying German warships and transmitting this information to the Allies. The Norwegian resistance is also smuggled people out of and expert fighters into the country, including saboteurs and US OSS, the precursor to the CIA forces. Providing training and equipment, soon there was a strong intelligence operation going on on behalf of the Allies in the occupied country. This brings us to the hero of the hour, Laurit Sand. Born in Norway in 1879 and serving in the Royal Dutch East Indies Army after studying architecture in the late 19th century, he later joined up again to serve in World War I and afterwards became a relatively successful businessman. In the years leading up to World War II, he had been living abroad but returned to Norway in 1938 at the age of 59. When World War II broke out shortly thereafter, he decided to forego previous plans of once again living abroad and he remained in Norway. When the Germans invaded in 1940, he joined the resistance movement. Showing an aptitude for intelligence gathering, in part thanks to his experiences in World War I doing much of the same, Sand helped found XU, standing for X being unknown and U being undercover. This was a covert intelligence gathering group working for the Allies in Norway. During the course of his duties with XU, Sand did things like photograph and map German military targets. Sand's World War II intelligence work it was short-lived, however, as he was betrayed by a German military intelligence operative, Laura Johansson, who infiltrated XU in September of 1941. As at the time of his arrest, he was carrying sensitive, incriminating documents, and he was known to be one of the leaders in this particular group of resistance fighters, he was soon sent to be dealt with by the Gestapo. Brutally tortured, by the time he was transferred from his first interrogators, Sand's legs and arms were broken, and he had serious wounds to his head and back. But the Nazis were not through with him. They knew that an awful lot of information about parts of the Norwegian resistance was locked up in Sand's head, and they were determined to get it out. Over the next three and a half years, Sand was alternately systematically tortured, kept in solitary confinement, treated in hospitals, and kept with other prisoners who tried to tend to the elderly Sand's many wounds as best they could. As he refused to disclose any information whatsoever to his captors, he soon became a symbol for the Norwegian resistance to rally around. Ultimately giving up on ever getting anything out of him, the Nazis scheduled Sanders execution by firing squad for May 17, 1945. However, as they officially surrendered on May 8, 1945, he was spared this fate and, remarkably, given all he'd been through, he survived the war. Shortly thereafter, San was awarded the prestigious Royal Norwegian Order of St. Olaf and his bust was commissioned. This ultimately bore his likeness and the single word nai, meaning no, which was meant to represent his absolute refusal to give up any information to his interrogators despite years of brutal torture. He died on December 17, 1956, at the age of 77. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you find out when we put out a new video. Also, leave us a comment. Let us know how we're doing on this new channel. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, thank you for watching.